Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a 2010, it's a Honda Accord, and what we're going to be replacing today is actually the, uh, the left front hub bearing. Um, the, the vehicle, well I'm going to bring you up, I'll, I'll show you what it sounds like before we do anything, but when you spin the wheel you can hear like a growling noise inside the wheel. Uh, while it's on the lift you can hear it. When you're driving it, it sounds like there's somebody riding next to you on a motorcycle, it's so noisy. So, and you can feel it in the floor of the car itself, the rumbling. Um, let me show you what the bearing looks like. Now, I'm not pushing one bearing or another, but I never like to use a poor quality bearing. I always try to use a good bearing such as uh, Timken or Moog or, or something along that line here. This is the bearing itself. Uh, this bearing is actually pressed into the, uh, into the hub. Uh, so we need to use a, a press to press this out once we take it all apart. Um, the, the kit that I use here at the shop, you have two different ways of doing it. One, you can take the, uh, the entire knuckle apart and you can put it into a press and you can press it apart, you know, off, off the vehicle. Or you can do it with this, with this tool made by uh, OTC, it's called the Hub Grappler. And you can do it while it's on the car and you don't have to take the whole assembly out of the vehicle to do it. So uh, let me bring you up there, I'll show you the noise, and I'm going to show you what tools we're going to need, and then we're not going to talk anymore, we're just going to get to work. Alright, let's get up there. Okay, so that's our wheel. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this, but let's see what happens. You might be able to hear that. Quite a bit of noise out of that. Alright, so uh, let me show you what tools we're going to need. Now remember I told you about that, that kit that I use, it's actually called the, uh, the Hub Grappler kit, that's the kit that I use. But what I did is I opened it up and I took out everything that I need to complete this job and I put it up on the side right over here. And the way you know what you need to, to do to complete this job is you go to the specific vehicle that you're working on and you look it up and it tells you what part number tools you need to actually disassemble it. So that's what this is all about here. Now we're going to close this and put it away. That's what all of this stuff is all over here. Now this is all the tools that we're going to need to actually disassemble it and to press the new bearing back in. Um, we are going to need some normal sockets, a couple of ratchets, uh, a wrench to hold the, uh, or I should say uh, an impact socket for the end here, and then a wrench to hold this end of it while we take it apart. Um, and of course, that. Without this, you're not going to be able to put this thing back together. You're probably looking at it saying, what the heck is this guy talking about? But the bearing is actually, this has ABS on it, and a bearing is actually uh, mounted directionally. You have an inboard and an outboard side. One side has a, a magnetic ring on the end of it, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. All right, so, uh, all right, let's, uh, let's take it apart and uh, let's get started. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our, uh, our caliper off of the car and we're going to relocate that off to the side. Okay, I just wanted to show you what I'm doing in here. I'm taking out that bolt there and that bolt there, we're going to move the caliper off to the side and then we're going to come down underneath here, that 17 millimeter right there we're going to take out that one and one down on the bottom over here and we're going to move this mounting bracket off and then we're going to remove this rotor from the car and we will take out a couple of these, uh, these screws right here too so uh, that's what you're going to see me doing I'm just going to pry these pistons in just a little bit so we can so we can get these caliper off. Just like that. And then we're going to take this caliper and just put this off to the side for now. We're going to 
take out those two 17 millimeters. We will come back to that later. And now we're going to take our rotor off. We are going to use our dryer to get this out of here. part that's really bad is inside of here. So we're going to shoot this nut off right here and we'll loosen that up. Alright, cover your ears. Now you notice that that, um, you notice that, that axle moved in? That's a good thing. Okay, now we need to take this axle out so we can get the, gra the grappler onto here so we can pull this out. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to disconnect the sensor in the back over here. out first and then I'll show you what it was. This is actually the ABS sensor we're removing right now. Okay. That's where we're taking it out, right here. And then we're going to also remove it from down over here as well. yourself a tray to put your nuts and bolts in so you don't lose them. That, that's the ABS sensor that we're going to be taking out. That's what I was telling you about that magnetic ring inside there. Okay, so um, we did take out that bolt right there that holds the uh, ABS cable over to the strut. And we did take out this bolt over here that holds the uh, brake line to also again to this bracket. Uh, we are going to take out that nut right there. We're going to shoot this out with the air and we're going to take this tie rod end off. We are also going to disconnect that ball joint right there and pop that ball joint up so we can uh, get this axle shaft out of here because our tool needs to go inside there. All right, so that's what we're going to do. Okay. So now that we have these, these nuts air gunned off both the, uh, the tire rod end and the ball joint, you can bang this with a hammer and that usually pops right out. And we're going to use a tool down here to pop the ball joint out because we don't want to damage that joint. So let's do that. Right. They come out fairly easy if you hit them solidly. And now we'll use that tool down on the bottom right okay, there. Okay, so this is the tool that I have installed down there now. And it holds on the bottom of the... Uh, the, uh, the, the ball joint, and then we push it up like that. Now, let me just explain one thing to you. What I always do is put a nut on there like that because you don't want to damage the threads where the, uh, where the tool is on the, uh, um, on the stud itself. All right, so I always put a nut back on there just in case. And now we're going to Get in here with some air, and we're going to air gun this and get it to pop off.
sounded like it broke, but it didn't break anything. It just popped. It just popped out. But that's the tool. This again is made by OTC. It comes as a whole kit. The kit number is 6295. That's the part number and it comes as like four or five different front end tools. These things work great. We're going to clean that up before we put it away of course. We'll take that nut back off. and I'm going to show you why because the wishbone is in the way here you see the wishbone here we can't lift it up high enough to get that out and we need to pull that axle shaft out so what we're going to do here instead of disconnecting the wishbone we're going to disconnect the upper ball joint and that'll give us that little room that we need so we're going to do the same thing we did here nut back on here as well because we don't want to damage that either. It's going to be a little tough to get in here with the uh... you know what? It's going to be a little tight to get in there. I'm going to try one thing first. Let's just tap it a few times to see if we can get it to pop out. There it is. Now, this tool would have worked in there, but you have to pull the pin out, we have to adjust it, and then I have to get up on top of it with a, with a, uh, with a wrench to tighten it. Just by tapping it like that, it popped right out of there. And now we can just lift up a little bit, and unscrew the nut, so we can move the... further we're going to try to get that ABS sensor out of there. Remember it was stuck in there. We want to be real careful with that uh -huh. so we don't break it. So I'm just going to work that sensor back and forth and hopefully get it out. feel like it's coming out. It feels like it's going to break. So we're just going to unplug the sensor up here for now. And we'll 
pull it out so I can work a little bit better. Now we can take the sensor out. And now we can take the sensor out with this. I'm going to take this over on the bench here. We're going to work on this sensor right here to see if I can get this out. And uh, then we'll come back and we'll use the hub driver on this. Okay, what I decided to do, I was able to get that ABS sensor out. It was really tight, but I was able to get it out without breaking it. Save the customer a couple of bucks on a sensor. Uh, instead of putting this back in the car, I'm going to put this in the vise right over here. And we're going to use the hub grappler on it, set up here in the vise versus putting it back on the car. So uh, let me get set up over here and we'll continue. Okay, first thing we did was we popped off this, this inner ring inside here. And the way we did that is we just got under here with a pry bar and just popped it right off just like that. And we'll put that to the side. We will need to put that back on. This is the bearing and that's the piece we're going to push out now. So let me hook this up in the vise and uh, we'll continue. Okay, so I just want to show you the setup now that we have. This is going to be actually pushing against right here and this piece here will be pushed out by this piece in the back right over here up against the, uh, the back part over here. All right, so now we're gonna shoot this with air. We're gonna hold this back here with the wrench and then we'll air gun that out. So uh, let's continue. goes in the back of it and it actually pushes this piece out all right now in here we need to get this piece off right here but we will come back to that what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a tool and I'm going to cut it along here and I'm going to cut along here and we're going to split this and get it off so we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute but for now we're going to concentrate on this bearing right here okay now there's a snap ring inside here you can see I sprayed it up already with penetrating oil we're just going to try to rattle it around a little bit to get it to loosen up. Okay, getting that snap ring out was a pain in the rear end. So I had to just keep on hammering with the impact chisel until I was able to get in there with my uh, snap, ring, snap ring pliers, squeeze it, and then get behind it with a screwdriver and pry it out. Alright, so that's that. Next thing we're going to do now is we're going to press out this, this, uh, this bearing. Now this bearing is coming out this direction. That's why the snap ring was on there because it actually 
holds the uh, bearing in place. So let me get the tool set up and uh, and then we'll shoot that out too. Okay, and we'll get this all set up on here. We have our attachments like this. Put it through here, over the top. We slide our other attachment on this end over here. going to pull that bearing into here. So, uh, all right, let's continue with that. Make sure you're wearing your safety goggles too. side for now. This, and this, and this, and that is our old bearing. All right? So, now remember what I told you about putting the bearing back in. It's got to be a certain direction that has to be magnetic. Let me show you. See? That's the magnetic side. I'll show you my new barrel. Okay. Nothing. That's the magnetic side. So you have to make sure you put the magnetic side in correctly. All right, now, we took this bearing out. This part was in there, because if you remember correctly, remember this piece here came apart? It was like that. So we know the magnetic part has got to go inside. Oh, you know what? Let's take that off. They always get stuck on here. Because of the rust that's around this section right here. All right, so we'll put this off to the side for now as well. This actually looks fairly clean inside already. All right, the only thing we are going to do is we are going to clean out this groove right here where our snap ring is going to go back in. So I'm going to clean this all out here real good. Right, that's nice and clean. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this snap ring here and we'll, you need to clean this up here with some um, sandpaper or whatever. I'm going to use my wire wheel to clean it up, but I'm going to clean this up first, and then we'll get set up and we'll put this thing back together. All right? All right, now we're going to put our bearing back in. I always put a little bit of never seize or anti-seize, whatever you want to call it, inside here to make it slide just a little bit easier, if that's a possibility. All right? Now, again, I'm going to show you. Let me get back to this in a minute. Make sure. 
secure, you take your bearing, make sure where's the magnetic side. That's the magnetic side right there. We know that was facing in this way, so that's the way we're going to put the new bearing back in there as well. Does not stick. It does stick. Okay? So that's the side that we're going to put in. It's going in just like this here. Now, we are going to put this in, but I just want to tap this a little bit. Just like that, just to get it to hold for a second. I'm going to take this. And this. And this. This goes over the top of the bearing right now. Again, all these numbers for these items, they're in the, book, in the, uh, the book. I'll put this in the back over here. I'll set it up and I'll bring you in there and I'll show you. Okay, come on over, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, that's around the back, right in here. I cleaned out that rust that was in there. This fits into that groove right there. That's where I snapped that, uh, that, that metal ring went. This is now in here, and this is up against the outer portion of the bearing, and now we're going to shoot it in there. We now have room for that snap ring to go back in there. You see how far in the bearing is? And it's all the way in as far as it can go in the back over there. You can see the anti-seize came out. That's it. All right, next thing we're going to do now is we're going to put that snap ring back in, which sometimes is a little bit tricky. But we cleaned it up on the, uh, on the machine. And now we're just going to put it in. You catch the one corner in there. This is, this is the way I do them. Sometimes you try to get in here with your, your snap ring pliers, you can do it. It's a little bit difficult to squeeze it closed. And you just don't want it going flying across the room. Just like that. And now what I'll do is I'll take a hammer and just tap it to make sure that it's popped in. So that's it, our bearing is now in, our snap ring is now locked in here, and now what we're going to do is we're going to set up over here, and we're going to cut this section off right here. So let me, uh, let me get set up and walk them right back. We don't want to scratch this up or damage this here, so now we just cut it most of the way through and now we split it with a chisel 
or you can use an impact, whatever you want to. I'm going to try it by hand first. You can see it's rotating already. And I just get behind it. Nothing on here. What we do is we cut this three quarters of the way through, maybe just a little bit more, and then you come in here with a real big chisel so that it doesn't go down into the groove, but it actually splits the bearing or the race apart just like that. All right, so now we got this off. Let's put our other piece back in the vise and put this back in there and wrap it up. Okay. Now, take our new. Uh, Our hub. Let's put some emphases on that as well. Just a little bit, just like that. And now this is going to go in here like this, but you can't just push this in without holding the bearing in the back. And the reason I say that is because this piece has to go on here just like that. Because if you try to push something through here without holding this, the back portion of the bearing is going to blow out through the back of it. So that's why we have to put that piece on there like that, so that this holds the bearing and it pulls this all the way through. I hope you understand that. And this one fits over the top, just like this, see? Like that, and then this. removed and we're going to put that right back on there. Now I, I might add you want to mark how you took this off. It's not imperative but I always do. Okay. I just want to tap it down. I know I'm going to hear from somebody saying, why didn't you go get the right tool for it? I just, uh, I don't know. That's just the way I get it. All right, so now our bearing is in. It's all back together. Everything is finished. 
nice and quiet. Let's get back over by the car. Let's put this back on there, and let's get this job out the door and on to the next. Okay. Now, the ABS sensor, I am going to put that in, but I'm going to put that in in just a minute. For now, I'm just going to get this put back up in here on our axle. We're just going to catch this all loosely for now. All right? This axle nut has to be torqued on with a torque wrench, just so you know. All right, let's get our ball joint back in there. Catch the ball joint. It helps if you have the right. And these OTC lights, they take a beating and they just don't die. OTC Spectrum is the name of the light. I don't know if you can see that. That's the name of the light. These are fabulous. Anybody who's looking for a light, get these lights. These things take a beating and they last forever as far as charging. You'll charge it up and it'll last you a couple of days. All right. Let's get our nut back on the top wheel joint. tool cart back over here. Works it out very well. So take your tools with you wherever you go, right? Alright, this one is pretty tight already. I'm just going to snug it down. I'm going to put a tie rod in it. Back in as well. And now I'm going to tighten up all of these all of these bolts in here. First we're going to start with the upper. Okay. That's lined up. We are going to put a card in there, just so you know. But I didn't go get them yet. We're going to shoot this one up right here now. Now those I'm going to tighten up with the wrench. I think this was 18, but... Grab some new powder pins. Okay, so to recap what we got, upper ball joint tight, wait a minute, upper ball joint tight, tie rod end tight, lower ball joint tight. Next thing we're going to do now is we're going to stick our ABS sensor back in there. 
that's the part that was a little messed up. So we're going to put a little bit of uh, Never Seize on there as well. Right in like it was made for it. Even though you see me using the extension, I'm, all, I'm turn, turning it in by hand. Same thing on the sensor. the bolts down. Not too tight because they're just 10 millimeters. And now we're going to plug this portion back in up top here. Make sure we put the little clip back up on top there as well. The sensor is now in. I'm going to tighten this up a little bit here, but I will come back and I will tighten this up with a um, the axle uh, nut right here. I will tighten this up with an air gun temporarily, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to tighten it up with the torque wrench. So I'm just just snugging it in right now. tight anyway so okay so that's all caught now next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to put our our rotor back on the vehicle ideally the brakes should be changed because they're dead but when he's a little tight put this on like that we're going to catch those two bolts to hold it in place I'm just going to tap it to make sure it's snug. Okay. All right, next thing we're going to do now, well, we're going to put our mounting bracket back on that we previously took off. And that just goes on right in the front right here. Put the light over here so you can see a little better. A little better. Like that. And now we're going to catch those two 17 millimeter bolts in the back. Now that we have it caught, we have both bolts caught, 
we can now tighten the uh, tighten the caliper mounting bracket all the way in. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we have everything here caught. Let's get our caliper over the top here. Make sure your brake hose is not twisted. Make sure it's nice and straight and there's no kinks in it. Put the brake caliper over the top. And now we'll catch both of the bolts to hold the caliper to the mounting bracket. Okay, now this will, will not tighten. You see this just spins. We need to hold okay, up in the top right up here. There's a bolt for the slide pin. You see that piece right there? We need to hold that while we try to uh, turn the outside and tighten it up. So it's just like that, and then we'll tighten it up. The same thing up top here. Okay. Okay, don't forget about that nut. We still got to come back to that. Okay, the last thing we got to do. Nothing left in our magnetic tray, one bolt, and that bolt holds on, I'll show you, it holds on that right there. So now we're going to catch this in here and tighten it up. There we go. That one is 12 millimeter. Now we're going to look up the specs on this and we're going to tighten this uh, this bolt up here so let me look it up and then we're going to come right back and uh, we'll tighten that up and we should be done okay, and last but not least we're going to torque that nut down right there and the way we're going to do it is we need to we need to hold this rotor so that it does not rotate so what we're going to do we're just going to stick in a screwdriver in here like this and then we'll turn this and bring it up until it gets here. And now we need 200 and 242 foot pounds. All right, let's take the gloves off and let's talk about what we did. Okay. Right, let's talk about everything here. Okay. Let's see if we get in here with some lights so you can see a little better. Okay. All right, so we put our, uh, we tightened up the uh, top ball joint. We tightened up the lower ball joint. We also tightened up the tie rod end and put carter pins in all three. We put our ABS sensor back in, put everything back where it belongs. We snapped our connector back together, put it back into the holder where it belongs right here, and we tightened it up down in there. That's all set. So we put our brake line back into its holder right here. We mounted our mounting bracket back on, two 17 millimeter bolts, both tight, two 14 millimeter bolts here, both tight, these bolts here, are tight for the hold of rotor and last but not least we actually 242 foot pounds to tighten that up last thing we're going to do before we go any further I'm just going to peen this down right here see how that has it we're just going to peen this down 
right into that axle. You know what? Let's do it right now. I'm going to actually do without gloves on. You believe that? On the top, just like this. Tap it down. And that's it. After you torque it with 242 foot pounds, it's kind of unlikely it's ever going to loosen up. But we always paint it over just like that, just to make sure and make sure it's safe. What am I doing with these on? I'm talking to you. I don't need these glasses on. It's only when I do close-up work I need these. All right, um, that's it. We're all done. We're going to take take. Obviously, we're going to put the tire back on, and we're going to take it out and take it for a test drive. Make sure it's nice and quiet. I'm sure it's going to be nice and quiet because that bearing was dead. Um, so that's it. We're all done. The other side, we did that side already, so it's, it's good to go. So uh, that's it. All right, so anybody wants to talk about this job, wants to know anything about this, this hub uh, grappler kit, um, I, you know what? I'm going to put a link down below in the description for the hub grappler kit and also for that front end part kit as well. And what the heck? While I'm at it, I'm going to put a link in for these lights as well so you can check these out. These things, I love them. These are the best. I can't tell you how many times over the years you used to drop the drop light, the rough service light bulbs, and every time you dropped it, you blow out a light bulb. This thing here falls, gets thrown by accident, and uh, they hold up really well. So I'll put links down below for all of those, uh, all of those things for OTC. All right, anybody wants to talk to me about anything, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to talk to anybody about anything. As always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.